59 years ago this week, the Supreme Court ruled in Griswold versus Connecticut that all married Americans have a constitutional right to use contraception. This decision has served as a foundation for other landmark Supreme Court decisions, including the expansion of the right to access contraception to other Americans in 1972. For those of us who remember the time when Griswold was decided, we remember what it meant for millions of America. With that decision, finally, the freedom to make their own reproductive family health care decisions, something which we take for granted in this country today. When Griswold was decided in 1965, our nation still had a long way to go, living up to the promise of equal justice under the law. As one example, 1965, women were often required to ask their husbands for permission to apply for credit cards. Hard to believe, right? In many banks, widowers and divorced women had to bring a man at the bank with them to co-sign for a credit card. Well, we've certainly made a lot of progress. And 59 years later, we still have a long way to go. But Griswold versus Connecticut decision was a breakthrough. It was a glimpse of the nation that we can be. Sadly, two years ago this month, Six right-wing judicial activists sent us back in time. I'm referring to the Supreme Court's decision in Dobbs, the crowning achievement of a Republican-led, decades-long campaign to overrule Roe versus Wade and abolish fundamental reproductive rights in America. The Dobbs ruling is one of the most irresponsible and dangerous decisions ever handed down by the Supreme Court. It ripped away a constitutional right from individuals and their families and handed it over to politicians. With the Dobbs decision, the ultra-conservative majority on the court not only overruled a nearly 50-year-old precedent that had been reaffirmed over and over again, but also twisted the facts to reach the outcome they wanted. What do I mean by that? Well, in his majority opinion, Justice Alito claimed that abortion cannot be constitutionally protected because it is not, and I quote, deeply rooted in the nation's history and tradition, close quote. Judge Alito is wrong again, because whatever you th may think about the issue, it has deep roots in our history. As the dissenting justices in Dobbs wrote, and I quote, embarrassingly for the majority, early law in fact does provide support for abortion rights. Justice Alito's argument for overruling Roe Ro has no credibility. It wasn't originalism. It was an ideologically motivated outcome based on his historical cherry picking. Incredibly, Justice Clarence Thomas wanted to go even further. He believes the constitutional right to privacy is a fiction. In a concurring opinion in Dobbs, Justice Thomas declared that the court should, quote, eliminate the legal doctrine behind the constitutional right to privacy and, quote, reconsider all of this court's substantive due process precedents, including Griswold, Lawrence, and Obergefell. That means one of the justices who eliminated the right to abortion also thinks that the court should reconsider the constitutional right to contraception, as well as the constitutional rights to marriage equality and consensual relationships between LGBTQ people. Over the past two years, Republican lawmakers have picked up where the Supreme Court left off. In state after state after state, they have ripped away reproductive rights from millions of Americans with devastating consequences. Overruling Roe versus Wade has unleashed a health care crisis in America. 24 of the 50 states have either barred or severely restricted access to abortion or are attempting to do so. Many of these bans by the states provide no exceptions for rape and incest, and many are grossly insufficient in protecting the health and lives of mothers. Some of these bans are even written in a way that appear to limit access to contraception. You may hear some of our colleagues across the aisle argue that Democrats are exaggerating when we say the right to contraception is at risk. They claim there's nothing to see here. Well, that the millions of Americans impacted by the successful effort to overrule Roe Ro versus Wade, which has inserted politicians and judges into the most personal decision imaginable. Tell that to the Americans who are worried that some of those politicians and judges now have their sights set on contraception particularly after Justice Thomas urged his colleagues to re reconsider the court's holding in Griswold. 
That is why my colleagues, Senators Markey, Hirono, and Duckworth, reintroduced the Right to Contraception Act, which I'm co-sponsoring. The bill would protect the rights of patients to access and use contraception and of health care providers to provide contraception and information about contraception. It would codify the right to contraception the Supreme Court first recognized in the Griswold decision. It would also allow patients, providers, and the Justice Department to go to court to enforce these rights. This week, the Senate has an opportunity to make history and counteract some of the repressive policies that Republican state legislators have put in place post Dobbs. Tomorrow, the Senate will vote on cloture on the motion to proceed to the Right to Contraception Act. My Senate colleagues will have to decide how they want to be remembered during this historic vote. Do they want to be remembered for blocking the effort to protect the right to access contraception or for standing on the right side of history and protecting reproductive rights? I urge my colleagues to join me during this anniversary week of the Griswold decision and help pass the Right to Contraception Act and ensure that Americans will always be able to access, access free and safe contraception. Mr. President, I yield the floor.